Today, we are going to look at the MVP of September. This is a monthly series in which I look back at the previous month, at the beginning of each month, and I determine who was WWE's most valuable player in the men's division and women's division. September was kind of a weird month because we actually had no PLEs. August had two, and I believe November has two. October only has one. But, but when it comes to September, no PLEs, but SmackDown did have a debut that was kind of sort of treated like a little itty bitty PLE, but regardless, let's get into it. The women's division PLE, I want to give an honorable mention to Chelsea Green. I feel she did a fantastic job. She is in a rare non-title women's feud. Usually, if there's not a title involved, there's no feud involved either. And yet, here she is with Meacham carrying a very, very interesting, hilarious feud even going to dumpsters because they, they have like this dumpster match thing going on. It's just really good. And she's not the MVP because not everything is centered around her. They're not building the show around her, but she is the flavor right now to the show. And yeah, that's a very important role. I just want to spotlight Chelsea Green for what she is doing. Amazing job. Hopefully she keeps climbing the ranks and maybe in a couple months, she'll be an MVP. And you can be the MVP of the month by subscribing and commenting below. And by doing so, you get a chance to win this belt. Once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do a live video where I randomly pick a video and I randomly pick a commenter and I will give this belt away to you. That's right, to you, possibly. Or you, maybe you, may, maybe, not you, you. Yeah, you, right there, I might give the belt to you. All you gotta do is subscribe and comment though. Why am I doing this? Because I want to become a full-time YouTuber. I'm following the dream here, and I need your help. And by doing so, I will give you a belt or a different belt. One of the belts behind me. Anyways, EO Sky is someone I wanted to make the MVP. She did an amazing job. She had this match with Bianca Belair that was so awesome, phenomenal. If I had to say what was the best match of September that had no stipulations, Definitely EO Sky and Bianca Belair. I even missed like the first three or four minutes because I was just doing something else. I wasn't paying attention, but that match was so good that it forced me to take notice. And I'm glad I did because wow, that was good. And I really appreciate how much EO Sky seems to want the tag team belts from Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill because her and Kyrie Sane, who also had a really good moment when she like had blood all over her face. Well, I wouldn't say good moment, but you know, she made a bad moment into a good moment, and it seems like the women's tag team belts are actually kind of sort of important right now. They're definitely more important than the men's title, and we got two teams who A, really want to hold them tight, and B, who really want to take them off the waist of their competitors, and yeah, Eos guy right now, she's on the cusp of just taking off, and I would have put her as the MVP if it was just my personal choice, but I do try to take just a very objective view of things and see who is the center of the women's division and what they are doing and how everything is being played and their importance in the grand scheme of things and I just could not deny that it's Rhea Ripley. Now if you want to say well it's Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan I get it that's a fair argument but to me it seems that Rhea Ripley is the one that's always winning, coming out ahead. And don't feel sorry for Liv. She won MVP like three months in a row, but Rhea Ripley right now, she's coming out on a crutch and still beating up Liv Morgan. She's tricking Liv Morgan into thinking that she's injured when she's not and beating up Liv Morgan. She's telling Liv Morgan, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attack you. I'm just here to talk. And then she beats up Liv Morgan and then she wants Dominic Mysterio in a cage. She gets him in a cage. Everything Rhea wants, she's getting She's consistently coming out on top of the Judgment Day, and I wish that wasn't the case. I want Judgment Day to look strong. I feel that Judgment Day looks too weak, but that is not what this video is about. It is about who is the most important, valuable person in the women's division, and whether I like it or not, 
It's Rhea Ripley, and I cannot deny it. She's looking super strong going into October, and no signs of slowing down. Plus, everybody loves her, and everybody loving you doesn't mean you're the MVP, but it sure does help. Now we go to the men's division. The men's MVP, Cody Rhodes, someone I've been very harsh on in the past. His title run has been very weak, but in September, I do believe he stepped it up. And you can say all day long is because of Roman Reigns. I don't care what the reason is. Cody Rhodes' title reign has seemed a lot more important in the month of September than it has in a very long time. He opened the first episode of the new era of SmackDown in a very strong title defense against the main villain of the WWE Universe, Solo Sokoa, like it or not, he has been the main villain since WrestleMania. And Cody Rhodes, he's in storylines with Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, he's making alliances with the real Tribal Chief, he's just all over the place doing so many things, and now he's in a Mega Powers Ultimate Super Team with Roman Reigns. It's just, I'm sorry, whether or not you feel that Cody is boring or a crybaby or this or that, He's super relevant and important right now on SmackDown or in WWE in general. He had a very, very strong case. And you could say, well, what about Roman Reigns? If Roman Reigns hadn't returned, he wouldn't be relevant. Again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then you could say, okay, well, then shouldn't Roman be the MVP? Roman will always be the MVP in my heart. But when it comes to these videos, no, he is not. He didn't wrestle. He didn't do anything. Everything that Cody did, Roman did. Because those guys are interlinked right now. But Cody actually did more. So I'm just going to have to say that Cody in regards to MVP status is actually above Roman in the month of September. As a whole, it's still Roman Reigns, but in the month of September, Cody Rhodes. But those guys are not your MVP, and it was a toss-up, a really tough choice between the next two people. I'm putting Bronson Reed as a very close runner-up, literally a flip of a coin, and Bronson Reed would be the MVP. This dude arrived in September, or maybe August, when he beat up Seth Rollins. But no, it was September that really showed him just living his best life as a monster. Bronson Reed made Braun Strowman relevant. Those guys were at war with each other, and it was amazing stuff. I said that the EO Sky Bianca Belair match was the best pure match, but Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed, that was the best chaotic chaos stipulation match that had everything going for it. Bronson Reed showed that he has arrived and he is now the monster to beat in the WWE. I believe this was kind of sort of a passing of the torch of Braun Strowman to Bronson Reed. Even though Bronson Reed lost, he lost in a way that was super protected. Seth Rollins came out, got his revenge. It was just brilliant. It was awesome. It allows Bronson Reed to eventually pick up back with Braun Strowman or go after Seth freaking Rollins, who was in the main event of WrestleMania 40 with The Rock, Roman Reigns, and Cody Rhodes. That Seth Rollins, this mid-card guy just a few months ago, is now in a program with Seth Rollins. Bronson Reed took his moment and made the most of it. That dude props. He... I wish I could make him the MVP, but I'm giving it to Jay Uso. And I know some of you don't like Jay Uso. You might be a minority, but you're a vocal minority. I get it. I've been in your shoes before, believe it or not. I never liked Goldberg. Everybody else liked Goldberg. The people will say they didn't like Goldberg, but they liked Goldberg. Let me tell you something. Goldberg was a phenomenon back in the day, and I didn't see it. I didn't like his mic skills. I didn't like his wrestling abilities. I didn't like Goldberg at all, but everybody else did. So I had to just kind of be quiet, <laughs> you know, because man, I'll tell you what, people would just, they, the moment they found out I didn't like Goldberg, like fangs would come out. And so I do understand where you're coming from. I happen to be in the I like Jey Uso camp and I tried to keep my emotions out of it. And the reason why though, I'm still putting Jey Uso as the MVP is because that moment on Raw, 14 years of building up to this moment, six or seven failed attempts at a singles championship, four years in the bloodline, and it all happens one, two, three on Raw in September. That was that was just a moment in time, a snapshot. It was just so great, so beautiful. We have been along for the ride as Jay Uso has been just belittled by Roman Reigns to the point that we all felt for the guy. We all felt sorry for him. And 
for him to rise to the challenge and win the Intercontinental Championship when nobody thought he was going to win. Nobody. We all wanted him to win, but nobody thought he was going to win, and he wins. I'll tell you what, that moment alone just catapults him, catapults him. He has a long way to go on his mic skills, on his singles in-ring ability, but that's all beside the point. In the month of September, he proved he proved he could do it, and it was so great. It was so great, and for for two to three weeks, he became more than Yeet. I hope he keeps Yeet, but I hope he's not only Yeet, and right now, right now, I just feel the sky's the limit for Jey Uso. He has the title, and he is your September MVP. So those are your MVPs, Jey Uso, Rhea Ripley, and yeah, let me know in the comments below what your MVPs were, and if you disagree, I really want to know. And if you do agree, then maybe tell me who your rising stars are. Because I didn't put Chelsea Green as the MVP, but I still wanted to mention her. So if you have somebody you want to comment below that I should be on the lookout for, or maybe I should really take a second look at, please let me know in the comments below. Guys, girls, have a great day.